All right, so happy morning to everyone. Surf getting on for noon, and uh, well, um, just going to talk about uh, this uh, video uh, that showed the uh, the skipping encoder. We'll talk about uh, why the encoders. It's really not an encoder; it's a switch, uh, but why they uh, they miss steps. But um, Anyway, so a lot of people came uh, through with this video uh, and sent it to me, and it's, other than full of the, you know, uh, sort of muppety, uh, you know, hyperbolic uh, nonsense, um, it's, it's, it's stuff like this. It's, it's, it's this uh, nutter, uh, Paula White, you know, talking about angels blessing uh, the knob so that it might work. Well, the knob really doesn't work. Um, and, and I think that's the issue uh, behind uh, why they he is uh, taking um, extraordinary steps like abusing copyright to uh, to get them down. Because uh, the videos at this point, the the videos all over the bloody place. Uh, I've been sent at least fifteen links to the same video. Uh, this is stress in effect uh, at work. Uh, but anyway, why doesn't it work? Um, so, in the name of science, um, I'm going to attach a bloody drill to the thing, which is, it, we don't test these things this way. I just want to point that out. This, this isn't the, you don't test things like this. This is not a proper test. Um, but I've had, uh, a few people ask me to just go ahead and do it. Um, so this is the, um the way that I have a logic analyzer connected to the radio. I have one on the RX line, so this is the uh, receive line from the main to the sub micro and the TX is transmitting from the sub to the main. Up is connected to the up line, which is right here at this point. So we will be able to see if the control doesn't respond to input because there will be a, a, a period of basically silence where it's when it when it does a skip if it's the control you will actually see it um but other than that it's fairly straightforward rx and tx lines are pins one and three on this connector it's just a little cable that goes down from the front panel to the uh, main board um <clears throat> and we can grab some data and uh and look at the bus states right now, which the buses are all high, they're they're idle, there's no uh, no data going back and forth because there's, there's nothing happening. The radio's on and not doing anything. Uh, so if I go ahead and click the thing uh, clockwise once to the right, which would mean up, um, you could see that the up control, uh, that, that data line is pulled down. So this is... Um, uh, basically, you know, supposed to be uh, a uh, edge triggered uh, thing. So, on a negative edge, uh, which would be the control pulsing that line to ground, send D, which on this is actually means go up one step, and then you can see the radio responds to the front panel with a new set of commands to redraw the display. Uh, and on this radio, it just is the uh, SR-955HP that is all that's written on the display. The other data is uh, for the uh, the meter and um, the frequency display and, and so on and so forth. Uh, things like the uh, parameters, like the color of the display and, and so on. Uh, that said, um, it's pretty much it. If we go the other direction, which would be down, and I go one click to the left anti-clockwise, the up line doesn't change. And that's because I'm not attached to the down line, I'm attached to the up line. So this doesn't change. Now we can see that there's actually a U, which means go up, or, or rather down. It's backwards. Um, uh, D is up and U is down. I didn't write the code, they did. <laughs> Tell them about it. It's strange, but it's just how they wrote it. Um, so if we do something else like, say, turn on the noise blanker, just turn on the noise blanker, and again, the up line doesn't change, and it sends a command of uh, 0xf4, it's a non-printable character, it's just 
uh, just um, a byte of 0xf4. And the radio responds with, again, another big packet to draw the display, which in this case says MB, some spaces, and on. That's uh, basically it. It's, just, it's a not so complicated uh, protocol. So now what happens when I go ahead and um, get my, my drill and start capturing data and uh, go ahead and put the drill into it and slowly speed up the drill and then stop. And go ahead and take a peek at this. So that's the drill speeding up and then getting to full speed and then me stopping the drill. Now, you see it's not missing any, any pulses here. Um, so you see in the beginning, um, we have a negative edge command response, negative edge command response, so on and so forth. So you could see that for every negative edge, there's a command transmitted to the radio. Up until you get to a certain point where it simply can't do it anymore. So it's just going, starts to going too fast and it starts missing. That's the example here. So the control registered that it was rotated uh, up one, but it was no command transmitted. And again here and again here. So that's the control. Uh, the control's functioning. You can see that here. The control's working. Because every time the control clicks, it pulls the line down, and that's when you see these little dips. That's every time the control clicks. And this is every time the uh, microcontroller registers said click, but it doesn't. And that's down to how they architected the system. You can see it just starts skipping quite badly until it just stops. It's going too fast for it to um, to manage. Uh, and it just gets erratic. And this is why it gives the illusion when the drill's running on it that it's working because it is getting some of these pulses. Uh, it's just not getting all of them. So uh, it it's just is what it is. Uh, the microcontroller is just simply not able to keep up. Now, why is that? So we can look at the uh, architecture of the system and we can, and, and looking of course at the uh, capture data and we can make one uh, determination. The first determination that we can make is that um, the up and the down lines are connected to uh, external interrupt zero and external interrupt one, but they're not using the interrupts. If they were using these interrupts in the software, you know, then the, skipping that you're seeing here actually wouldn't happen. We are not rotating the control fast enough to overcome an interrupt running on a 19 some odd megahertz uh, uh, microcontroller. It, we, we, would, we would have to um, spin the control a lot faster to basically prevent it from triggering interrupts. Um, it may still miss at high rates of speed, because it would be inside of the uh, ISR interrupt service routine for the interrupt uh, and simply unable to um, respond because, you, you know, if you're in an interrupt, you can't trigger it again. Um, so you will hit that problem, but you're going to hit that problem uh, going way faster than this. Um, so that said, we know these interrupts are not used, and that's just... Uh, the way they did that. I know why they did that. They are, however, using the interrupt for the UART. Um, and that's exhibited by the fact that the uh, the radio always seems to respond to the display packets. So it is always receiving the, um, the serial data. Um, and they do that because as it's sending... Okay, so we we've, if we look at one of these packets that's being sent... Um, it's um, basically uh, 0xfe, which is, a, a, hey, I'm going to start sending you something. You know, pay attention, essentially. It, we'll do that in, in serial columns to say, hey, I'm getting ready to send you something. Um, and uh, at that point, then it starts the packet. And at the end of the packet, um, there'll be a, uh, there's going to be a check byte. And this is going to be the check byte right here. 
So every one of these packets has a check byte. It's a uh, uh, um, 8-bit modulo and uh, so on and so forth. But the um, the thing is, it always gets the packet. So it, that means this interrupt is actually utilized. Um, and this, these uh, 8051s, I think they only have a one byte buffer or something to that effect. So it basically has to um, get the byte, trigger the interrupt, and then the code within the controller, microcontroller, has to then copy that byte to um, some, you know, um, in, into into its RAM, you know, into probably an array or something, and then um, grab the next byte. Because as the bytes are coming in, of course, it's triggering interrupt, and um, I'm sure that they're just storing in a buffer. And when they have a complete packet, um, at some point, probably periodically, it goes through the buffer and it pulls out the uh, the packets, um, basically looking for the starts and uh, the check bit and saying, okay, I have one, and then processing it. Um, but that means you sacrifice this. I would have done this a little differently, personally, but it's how they did it, and it's their system, and they can do what they want. Um, just, it's not up to us. Uh, now, uh, it's possible that, uh, you know, these things can be uh, uh, reprogrammed. I don't have the tool chain for these. These are some um, odd... Uh, uh, the, these microcontrollers are, are on uh, probably uh, Shenzhen market specials. Um, I don't have a tool chain. Uh, I did find the data sheets for some of these, and of course there's no English uh, translations of them, so it would be quite difficult um, to uh, work out uh, what they're doing. I'd have to basically um, use an 8051 that I would have access to and, and develop something and then see if I can't maybe get it to work with their tool. It's, it's possible, but it's probably uh, uh, something that I wouldn't be able to do without um, knowing a little bit more about the system. Um, but uh, that said, that is why these things skip. You're not going to put a knob on it. You're not going to change the control. Um, Unless the control is bad. Like in this case of this control, there's nothing wrong with this control. Uh, it's working just fine. Um, but, um, yeah, you're not going to do it. It's not going to work. And uh, I think that was uh, what was in this video. Uh, I saw the video myself, and you could clearly hear 12 clicks. And you saw it move like only... Uh, six or seven uh, channels and that was because it encountered the situation where the control was flicked uh, and I can do that I can I can flick the control so if I go ahead and flick it like with my hands um, you could see that I flicked the control and it only moved once so the control worked the microcontroller just simply couldn't it, it's just not it's probably polling the pins, uh, you know, polling, doing a scan uh, against the uh, the inputs, so on and so forth. Who knows what they're doing, but they're doing some form of polling, um, probably in the main loop. And, you know, hey, what's the stat? What is the pins level? Is the pin a zero or one? Okay, it's a zero. That means somebody spun the control, send the, send the command, uh, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, this isn't a fixable problem with hardware. Uh, this is literally a, I must, this must be fixed within the code. Uh, it's just how they're using the interrupts and uh, how the system was architected. Uh, and that's all there is to it. Um, this is essentially a striker's ODM problem. So, hey, uh, sorry to, uh, uh, to rain on the parade, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, feel free to repeat the results. Go ahead, get your logic analyzer connected to the uh, the data lines and the um, uh, the upline, and see for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Um, and, and don't attach drills to your radio. Um, you're either going to get hurt or you're going to break the bloody control. Um, that all that illustrates is that um, uh, you can spin it really fast and it will appear to work, but in reality, it's really missing a great deal of, uh, of steps. Anyway, so cheers, guys. Catch you next time.